All right. So welcome to tonight's. <laughs> <laughs> already. So you starting already, Carlos. I know. Between my red lips. Listen, disclaimer, I'm not wearing lipstick. <laughs> I am a health nut, as you all know. So I have my homemade smoothie. So I'm going to tell you my recipe, Dustin. Obviously okay? beets. Those are obviously beets, correct? Yes. Okay. I have beets. Mm hmm Raspberry. Mm hmm Blackberries. Mm hmm Ginger. Mm hmm Moringa. Okay. Um, I'm missing. Oh, celery. Okay. Yeah. And carrots. All you need is a little vodka. I think that'd be, you oh. know, <laughs> looking right on up. That's perfect. <laughs> I do that. Best of both worlds. You get a little health and a little fun. <laughs> I like that. No, that sounds delicious, though. It's a lot of no wonder it's so red in color. The, the blackberries, the raspberries, the beets, the berry berries, the holly berries. You got all the chuck berries. You got every kind of goddamn berry in that smoothie. Lord have mercy, Carlos. But we ain't got no Marion Berry, although this oh, is DC. No. We definitely don't have none, okay? We don't have none of that. But we do have a hot mess express. So tonight's episode of part two reunion, Dustin Ross kicked <laughs> off with the continuation of Quick versus Clifton. They did. And the aftermath of this brouhaha that occurred due to, listen, the patties feel like, well, Quick may online, not online, he made threats about me on the show, saying something along the lines of, and I'm paraphrasing, of course, but something about handling handling it in a different way would, would have a different result. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. And then Clifton felt like, well, you see me now, let's handle it. And then everything went to shit. It definitely did. It definitely did. And I, to me, that was the lowest point in the reunion episode because there was a lot that took place in part two, right? Yeah, and that, part that, two was jam-packed. I yeah. mean, chock full, okay? The, the part that fell the most flat for me, though, was that continuation of the Clifton versus, or excuse me, because he was very clearly Clifton during that exchange, right? Clifton versus Quick. I'm all for, you know, the 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 um, crashing, you know, the shields against each other. But once the threats and the, the accusations move off of the show, we lose interest. Mm -hmm. So all of that, you won't walk around D.C. and, oh, I would have did this if I was here and I would have did that if we was there. We don't care about all that. What you focus on is you, you say, I didn't like you saying you was going to handle me later, just like Clifton did, and leave it there. All the rest of that, that uh, I saw Ashley, she was obviously, you know, tensions were high on stage. So everybody mm -hmm. was reacting to what was going on. And I noticed that when Ashley was speaking about it, she was saying how, um, you know, they don't do this in real life. And that's why they didn't want to be put in these situations and stuff. And I don't see the correlation of being put in a situation necessarily. It was simply a disagreement. Right. Um, that no one I, I wants to participate in, but that's where it was. So I just feel like once things start snowballing into a kind of off the show territory with the accusations or with the insults and shit, it is not fun anymore. And, you know, we kind of lose interest as viewers. Mm -hmm. But I did like the fact that it was addressed head on, which is what the reunion stage is for. It's showtime when you're on that reunion yeah. stage. You have only... Um, and a lot of amount, of amount of time to address all of the things that have taken place over these weeks. So um, while I did enjoy that, I was ready for us to move on. And, oh, did we move on from it? We definitely did. No, we moved on from it. And, and listen, I agree with you. It's not a number one. I did not expect that to happen. Yeah. Which is why you see my reaction, because we're from Michigan. Yeah. You are from Flint. You better know. I am from Detroit. That's Flint right. is considered more of good times and Detroit is considered <laughs> the Jeffersons. <laughs> you got a lot of fucking nerve. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, hey, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, we, we, we stand 10 toes down in that. So yes. absolutely the ideology is, is as far as defending yourself is in alignment with that. They would track, yes, yes. We don't play that way, in other words. 
And by the way, you have to be from Michigan to know that Detroit yes. throws shade at Flint and Flint throws shade at Detroit. What we do. It it's wouldn't be right do. if we did. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that is a it's a Michigander mm -hmm. thing. Hello. So <laughs> I, I agree with you in the sense of listen, it's not something that um we want to see because you know, even in the reunion, you know, when there were conversations of, you know, Ashley not wanting um joy mm -hmm. at the basketball game and production wanted this is what they wanted and i had to explain and i'll explain it here too and i explained it before <clears throat> when you're on a reality show the purpose is to film with each other and to be around each other and in various cases yes there's moments of you know i don't want to film here i want to film that um the biggest thing for us is always trying to um, test the temperature to see if it's that serious. Mm -hmm. Nobody felt that at that moment it was going to be what it was. It happened. That's why me, grown ass man, you mm -hmm. know, owner of the company, creator of the show, all the listen, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But of course, you know, anything dealing with Carlos King is always going to be my fault. That's, it, that's it, why. It, it, Right. Because, again, it's like being a parent. Right. Exactly. If your child does something. It's a reflection on the parents. So for me, I was like, I'll, I'll I'll take ownership of that. But don't act like. It was pushed that mm -hmm. literally what was pushed <laughs> and <laughs> all that wasn't yeah. that. And I think it's one of those things where everybody should take responsibility for everything. It can, and it ain't gonna be just me. And it shouldn't just be a, another person. I think it's a collective thing. And what you saw in in that moment, um, to me, was this level of trying to get people to understand at the end of the day, everybody is responsible for their the behavior outcome. and their actions yeah. and the outcome. Yeah, go ahead. For sure. I, I love that you took accountability. That's leadership. That's what that's called. That's leadership, right? When you say, yes, I'm at the helm of this ship ultimately. And so for a misstep that we may recognize, no problem. I stand in that, you know, but you're right. It doesn't define the reactions, the choices, the responses that come from other circumstantial situations that have nothing to do with a omitted um, opportunity, right? So yes, there could have been a chance for a, a bridge to have been built there. However, that doesn't impact what took place thereafter. Um, what I did appreciate, since we had the suite, let's talk about it. What I what I what I did appreciate was that guess who showed up and had input today? Joy, that's who. The way oh, Joy broke down. Oh, oh yeah, she set up. She set up. In fact, in this case, she was holding Clifton back. The way Joy was like, hold on, let me steer this car, brother. She held Clifton back like this, and she spoke up and said what she had to say. And I loved it because it added so much clarity. When Joy spoke and she said, well, we had the conversation outside the suite. And afterward, you went directly to Clifton. And you started that exchange. So who, whose actions, your arms, whose hands, whose words, whose was it? That was the. That's how the dominoes were knocked over that got us to that end. And so I love that that context and clarity was added because we were finally able to make some progress in getting to the bottom of things because what did Ashley do? Being the the natural, you know, leader in the uh, of one of the natural leaders on cast, what did she do? She took accountability. She said, you know what? You're right. I did go up to him after we left that scene. And you're right. I did start it. You're right. She owned it. That's called progress. You saw we were moving forward and they weren't, Nobody had a knife against anybody else's throat, right? They just right. was talking it out and moving forward. And I love that progress was made. And I think that it is a, um, it's definitely of note that that progress was made because Joy decided to contribute to the conversation. And I love that because what she had to say was helpful. So that's what I love the most about that scene. And we were able to kind of move on from that i also love that clifton spoke up and said listen they they started talking out because you don't want to negate ashley's feelings if she felt intimidated in some way by a, a grown-ass man you know that's a hard stop for me i don't intimidate women and i don't even i don't want to none of that shit. we don't get down like that we weren't raised like that so if you felt like that i'm sorry for that that you know full stop 
And I, but I do like that he also spoke up for himself and said, you know, hey, I didn't. And even Joy said that he didn't do that to you. You know, he said, hey, I moved side to side. You you encouraged him to identify that behavior as him trying to agitate her in some sort of way. They were in a confrontation. You know what I mean? And he owned it. Yeah, we were arguing. So, yes, I was trying to, you know, it, it was antagonizing her or whatever. And that we made progress. That's all it takes. The things that they yes. were discussing and having these these nuclear fallouts over are so petty and so small in nature, right? You're arguing about whether or not somebody reared up or moved side to side. You know, what is this? Are we playing dance, dance, revolution? You, what, what, you know, what is it? We break dancing? What is not this? Billy you know, Blanks, okay. What are they? Billy Blanks, Ty Bo. You know, are, are we, what are we doing here? Like, what are we really talking about? Even, I know we're jumping all over the place, but it was no, just go ahead. So Dustin Ross, so ladies and gentlemen, happened. go ahead. Chuck. It was so much that happened, even when we started finally getting to the bottom of this uh, tension between the Silvas and the Tylers, right? And we see that all roads lead back to what? Goddamn Twitter. All roads lead back to Twitter. My thing is that had that exchange that happened on Twitter has nothing to do with the show. Social media is, is literally the HBIC of Love and Marriage DC. The Remember HBIC, the B. yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the HBIC of Love and Marriage DC is Twitter. It just becomes a sinkhole. You literally just start falling down further and further, and it never stops once you start engaging that way on Twitter. But I thought what was most interesting about what Jamie, or excuse me, what Ashley and Arena started to discuss, which was a response from Jamie to some tweets from the young lady that lives in the um, Silva home. Yes. Right? Um, who's not a part of the show. So I don't understand why an exchange, to me, I didn't understand the equivalency that, or, or I didn't understand the correlation that Ashley was trying to make. Um, likening that exchange between Jamie and the young lady that um, lives in their household mm -hmm. had on Twitter because she's not a cast member. Little Jamie is on the show. He's a part of this show. Uh, he, what happens with him is relevant to the story on the show. And so an exchange between her and Jamie, that exchange has now spilled over into the show where it simply doesn't belong. And I think that's the source of all of that part that just seems impossible to figure out is because it doesn't even belong there in the first place mm -hmm. that young lady she's not signed up to be a part of these conversations she's not a part of this story literally she is not a part of this story so while of course you know i, I have a, a strong allegiance and loyalty to my family and friends mm -hmm. they literally are, the, are my heartbeat right and I govern myself through the way that I move in relation with in, in in relation to them and in relationship with them but this is a project. This is a specific um, um, course of events that is that is created by key players put into place. So people that are not a part of this really interrupt the flow of of the the, the science behind a reality show working. Prime example is what happened on Real Housewives of Potomac this season when a woman who is not even a part of the cast starts mm -hmm. a fist fight that now has spilled over into what's going on on the cast and, and they can't figure out how to get right because you're using, there are external factors that just don't belong there. I felt the same way about that Twitter exchange and I wish that they could just identify it as a foreign object to the core of the show and remove it. Just remove it, just let it go. And then what are they mad at each other for? Yeah. For what? And, and and it's funny because I was um, having a conversation, a conversation with someone recently about this. You know, when you look at the icons of reality television mm -hmm. stars, right? Yeah. Um, the one who I will always um, speak to um, would be Tiffany Pollard. Absolutely. Tammy Roman. Yes. And Nene Leakes, right? Yeah. Arguably those three. One thing I can appreciate, especially from Tiffany Pollard and Tammy Roman. Can you imagine if Twitter was around doing flavor <laughs> of love? <laughs> Can you imagine if Twitter was around doing flavor of love? I think it would have made Tiffany Pollard not this legendary heralded um um woman that 
we all love because she kept it on the stage, right? Yeah. Like everything happened on the show and we knew nothing else that happened outside the show. And that's what made us love her. Imagine Tammy Roman having Twitter when she mushed Sheikah in the face. Is it Sheikah? Um, 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 what was her name? Uh, Mika, Mika Claxton. Mika Claxton, yes, Mika. Mika, Mika Claxton, or, right. yeah. or when her and F got into it, when she said, you're a non-mother effing factor. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I look at that, or even Nene Leakes when mm -hmm. Sheree did not let her in the house in the premiere episode of Atlanta Housewives, yeah, right? Yeah. Can you imagine if Twitter was like the thing back then? I think what is happening in reality television, and this, this goes for all reality TV, um, is Twitter is ruining the show because it's becoming the show and it's exhausting the audience and it's it's it, and not just if we talk about potomac there we're was talking a hashtag, about reality shows in general yeah let's talk about potomac there was a hashtag mm -hmm. boycott rhlp and i'm like why are we boycotting potomac and then the gag yeah. was dusted that this past sunday part three reunion trending number one on twitter and i think it was the highest rated um reunion of of the of uh, all the three for sure. Well, again, I, I what what I would love for people to do, and and that's the reason why I look at reality stars now, and I'm like, are we ever going to have another blockbuster superstar reality star? We like, will. Can't... Go ahead. We can and we will, Carlos. I have faith, and I have faith because there can be communication. Uh, create created to to message to these reality stars what they need to know right you your participation in these shows as a cast member is the value that you add to the show it's your reactions your thoughts your emotions your countenance your physical movement your presence what you wear uh, um, how you show up in certain spaces all of that is the value that you add to these shows once you give it away for free and start giving your opinions, reactions, thoughts away on Twitter for free to people who are not interested in finding a common ground with you, they're trying to tell you how they feel because these shows are about studying human behavior. Mm -hmm. So naturally, people have strong, passionate opinions about what they're watching on TV because they can relate. They've been in similar conflicts. They've been in similar situations. They've seen people that you remind them of that that stoke up these really strong, passionate reactions from the audience. And it's what keeps people watching. You as a cast member have a responsibility to manage your value, manage your contribution to these shows. You cannot, you simply cannot exist within the, the capacity of exchanges of, of opinion with people that watch the show. It is fine for somebody not to like your ass. It is fine for somebody to have you fucked up and, and, and think that your intention is different than what it was or think that you did something wrong to someone that you did not do. That's their opinion. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that someone's being toxic to you unless they're delivering it in a toxic manner, mm -hmm. then yes, they are. But just because they have that opinion, it does not then um, require an effort from you to change their mind about anything. The way you do that is through how you show up on camera as you continue to move forward on these shows. So I have hope for the future. I think that there are people that get it. And, and a lot of times it takes going through the experience one time for you to learn, oh, you know what, let me pull back. Like you just referred to some of your more experienced cast members have, you know, doing as of late. They pull mm -hmm. back from those exchanges on Twitter because it's simply not there. And also just as far as game 101 here, that cheapens your value because now you can get your opinion, you can get your take for free for nothing. And so um, I just hope that people understand that moving forward. It's nothing yeah. wrong with the audience having strong opinions, but you don't have to be a part of that exchange. And then the comment section is not for us, you know, it's for the people that are watching. That's like what that, it's for. That, that, like that's, yeah. Oh, I perceive you are preaching. I, I have yeah. never looked at it that way. When you are on television mm -hmm. and you post something, the comments ain't for you It's for them. They are. It's for them. That's why that section exists. And a lot respect people's space in that way. Give them their space to react and respond to what you're presenting to them for consumption. 
that's the way you have to zoom out and really understand how this works or the mechanics of this thing so that you understand where it's most advantageous for you to exist as a cast member on this show. And you also avoid a lot of this stress that we see is making these people's voices shake and crack when they get to yelling and screaming because they're so passionate on that reunion stage, looking so good. Um, I, everybody on this stage looked beautiful tonight. I want to say that too. This yeah. cast is a very attractive cast and they Gorgeous. all look good on the stage. Shout out to Shirella. She looked beautiful. Duncan, she looked absolutely stunning yes. on that stage. Her glam, all that shit. She looked beautiful. And I love her tone when she contributes to these conversations. I beautiful. love the fun take that she has on some even more serious matters that they discuss on the stage. I love it. She just breathes energy into this cast. And I cannot wait for her and Joy to finally have the conversation that we know they need to have next week. I can't wait. I can't wait to see her and Joy get to the bottom of this whole you were a side chick to black, you know, and, and his mm -hmm. girlfriend who was my friend. I can't wait for them to dead all that and reach mm -hmm. whatever common ground they need to because Joy, although standing firm on hers and being con fully convicted in her views and opinions, she was speaking in a manner she was working with people as she was speaking with them and talking things out initially. When she would first start talking to these people on the cast about different issues, she was saying what she had to say finally, but it wasn't in a combative way. It was just her saying, hey, this is how I feel about it. And then we were able to make progress. I loved seeing that from her. I feel like Shirella was doing the same thing. So I can't wait to see how that goes. I have high hopes. OK, I have high hopes for that, that conversation and the outcome. But. Yeah, you just got to stay out them damn comments. That's it. Stay out the comments and apparently stay off the D. So what do you <laughs> think? Between... <laughs> so props are a thing now for unions. Hey, Kenya Moore. See what you started, Kenya? Our yeah, Detroit started. queen, right? I wish Kenya, Kenya would have started it and Monique uh, Samuels finished it because I'm tired of the props. Like props have to land. Kenya's props landed because they had an iconic outcome. Monique's props landed because they finished Giselle in that reunion setting. That binder wore Giselle out. I mean, out. She was visibly like, the, it was like her, her, her <laughs> skeleton had recessed backwards and the rest of her skin and face had like moved forward. She was sitting back like this after that point. You after love. The way Monique tore her up. Monique tore her up. And it was what it was. We all saw it unfold. And Karen came through with that one, two. Is Jamal coming? Boom, that was it. That was a <laughs> fatality, right? But I, we don't need no more props. I don't want no more poster boards. I thought that that Arts and Crafts, Frank's Nursery, Arts and Crafts D that Irena had, you know, I, I thought it was a moment. I was actually glad it happened, though. You know why? Because when Irena got up to get it, you know that was Frank's Nursery and Crafts. But when I was thinking at least Frank, Michael's. Joanne. But when <laughs> it went up... <laughs> Hobby Lobby. But when, <laughs> when, when, <laughs> Carlos, please. <laughs> the goody <laughs> bond. But here's the thing. When, when, Irena stood up, the tailoring on that gown and the way that split, that leg and that split, Irena looked good than a motherfucker on Amazing. that stand. When I say she looked so good, even at when, when Ashley was, um, props to Ashley because she knows how to sit in a gown on stage. Mm -hmm. Even as Ashley was getting emotional and passionate with the way she was responding, mama was poised. She was sitting in that posture. She she was she when she leaned, them arms didn't move. She was poised. She leaned. She did what she had to do. She was moved. She was on swivel, you know? And I love that. Because that's a woman. That's a lady. You understand what I'm saying? They look gorgeous. That's why we hated to see them fighting like that. Do you think though that this whole D conversation that was happening between the trifecta of Winter, Ashley, and Irena, in terms of Irena alleging that Winter worked hard for the D, mm -hmm. um, that it was a necessity in order for these two people to have somebody on the show to be to film with. Okay, no. I think that I think that Winter, what I think is this, I think that Winter and Ashley do have an organic, authentic friendship, right? They're an unlikely duo and they found their way toward one another, which, you know, I love that. When we first saw them being friends online, I reached out to you behind like, 
Carlos, I love it. You know, yeah. So I love that, right? Um, I do think there is that them being them having each other was mutually beneficial. You know what I mean? It was beneficial for Ashley, beneficial for Winter as well. Um, Arena started that on stage when she told Winter, you've been running up behind anybody black. No, one thing you don't want to be accused of is running up behind somebody, running up behind a man, running up behind your your, your woman, running up behind somebody, else, licking up behind, you know, that that's what all that means. And so when he ran, it was such a, unabashedly black moment you know that was one of those colloquialisms that we just understand when she said the way yeah you went running up behind her you know that was a clear shot and what was so funny was winter who had been in i'm um, chilling she was in, in her space she was chilling on that stage reacting when she needed to and wanted to but she was in a good space when Irena did that said you hear you've been running up behind her. winter was so caught up God, she said oh, what all right <laughs> She ain't see that coming from Ray Ray, baby. She ain't see that coming. Baby, Ray Ray, Ray, Ray came to play, that. play. She woke it up with that, and that tickled me. When I tell you I laughed, Carlos, I was cracking up. Because Winter was like, all right, all right, don't do that. She, she was like, wait a minute, I'm about to check her. I can't believe what she said. Arena had me rolling, and Winter did too. Um, so that was a good moment. You know, I just think that... Um, I loved it when my girls were getting out of their anger and their passion mm -hmm. and, and articulating their thoughts. I think that's when we got some of the best reads that everybody loves. You know what I'm saying? I think that's when it went back and forth. Um, although it's a very nasty allegation, it was funny when Irina said, she said, you be drunk all the time. That was funny because we knew that at that point, Irina was literally mad as hell. OK, mm -hmm. and she had she didn't give a damn no more about decorum, about none of that shit. She was just going in. OK, and Ashley had been there anyway. So it was just funny to see her arrive there. But at the same time, it was bittersweet because I don't want to see them fight. No. I don't. And after that, you did not see them fight because Yusha comes out. Oh, baby, baby. <laughs> Yusha comes out. Winter is now a part of this thruple. <laughs> oh, yeah. She said right in it. She said, I'm going to be Carmen today or whoever. Okay. Least, hey. gonna be whoever it is. Whoever in the middle today. Got Moni in the middle. Where she at? In the middle. She said she's going to be Moni in the middle today. Guy. No, you said she's going to be Carmen. <laughs> yeah, whoever it was. Okay, Alicia. They, they say that about her, too. All of them, you know. <laughs> but uh, she said, I'm sitting in the middle on today because where I'm not going to be is next to this motherfucker right here. That's what she said. <laughs> she is sick of you, sir. I know. It was so funny. So we had no idea that she would um, get up. and not... mm -hmm. Listen, it, it was like, you can't even sit next to this man. Yusha, who is so, like... <laughs> <laughs> so monotone. You see, just so like peaceful at ease. Or he all, you like know, he, he, yeah. He's, he's, you know. <laughs> yeah, very so, easy. Yeah. So, what was your whole thoughts on that? Because she was going in on Yusha, baby. Uh, so was Sherelle, and so was Black. Uh, nobody said no. He's not a user. They always just kind of like. I, I don't want to be that. I thought that was very interesting. The fact that Winter alleged that Yusha is an opportunist. Mm -hmm. And when I asked Sharella, is he, like you said, I was like, well, you, <laughs> if somebody asked me, is Dustin Ross an opportunist? No. Hell no. You right? Be like, <laughs> I, I don't have to, I don't have to think about There's it no and be like, well, and then it made you question well, child, why would you hook your girl up with somebody who you think is an opportunist? Like, what do we? But you know, hey, and you know who we saw? We answer. saw that. We saw that scroll right across Joy's faces that was going on because you know that's what Joy was thinking that whole time. Like, well, girl, what? A, look, another TLC week. What about your friends, okay? baby? <laughs> okay, that's what she was on. But ain't I, too I proud think that, to beg. Ain't Go. too proud to beg. Okay, <laughs> don't see. I'm not gonna start with you, guys. <laughs> Fan mail. Continue. No scrubs. Anyway. <laughs> oh, not no scrubs. 
<laughs> so you know, um, I they wore they wore Yusha out. They wore Yusha's ass out on that stage. Baby. And thank God he had rehearsed his lines a thousand times, like Patty LaBelle said. Okay, until he had them what memorized because that whole line about uh, you have you told me verbatim not to trust anyone in this space, and you have hurt me the most out of you are the contradiction that was so. I mean, good. You, <laughs> you thought that was a rehearsed read? Uh, you see, Ashley ain't call him no Tubi actor, you know what I'm saying? Because that was at least Max, that was that was at least who, oh. okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> BT plus baby, BT plus for sure. Okay, all black. All right, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. That was great. He obviously had rehearsed that. That was that same old pizza box ass shit that Phaedra did on every reunion. The same type sort of rehearsal, but entertaining nonetheless. And I will say, Yusha was a good sport because he never lost his cool, and he he was never um, blatantly or I shouldn't say blatantly. He was never grossly disrespectful to winter in their disagreement on that stage and i definitely think he deserves props for that um because it's hard to remain measured you know and composed excuse me composed when you feel passionate about something so yeah no the, listen um i i happen to agree with you because even even being there because like you had to be there to really he seemed so shocked mm -hmm. right obviously he knew they broke up Mm -hmm. Um, so he wasn't coming in thinking like, you know, like we about to sit up here and, and right. <laughs> right. I think he was so shocked how, she, you know, the comments that she made about his character mm -hmm. and the whole thing about the t-shirts and the merch and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to wear this. Can you wear that? Or can you introduce me to this person? Um, but listen, I, I just remember being that moment like this man is like, what did I get myself into? Like, yeah, he, he wasn't expecting that. And I also think to your point, he also was probably not expecting Black and Shirella to be like, no, I ain't no opportunity. No, what you talking about? That's my that's my, that's my man. <laughs> OK, <No. laughs> they, they they put their palms up to the sky. <laughs> that was it. And I was like, oh, my God. Damn, Yusha. I just remember thinking to myself, damn, Yusha, like, do you have a friend? You want you want a next time? You want me to phone a friend? Okay, you should. You should have thought better, <laughs> thought twice about, you know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers, you, the people you, the company you keep, the people you rolling with, you know what I'm saying? You should, you should have thought twice. I mean, I, I, obviously, you know, these people, hey, but, but you know what? Props to them because that's what we want. Honest commentary, honest contributions. We want honest, you know, assessments of people's character or what you, you ask. If you ask them a question, I want them to answer it honestly, you know? Mm -hmm. And and I think that it, provi it provided all the color we needed in that situation because it really caught me by surprise. So I know Yusuf was up there tripping like, <laughs> God. like I know y'all did not just say, we don't know, but hey. And he stayed in it. He owned it. He said, you know, I'm always, I'm never going to turn the hustle off. I hate it when people speak in circles about things that they can really be direct about. Just say, you know what, Carlos, I thought this was a great opportunity. This show is very, very popular, and I would love nothing more than to introduce this audience to things that I got going on. So I was doing what I thought I was supposed to do. You know, I'm not here to that... try to be disingenuous. Like, just be honest about it. That's that, because if, if it's, if you're not being sneaky and opportunist, you know what I'm saying? And yes. I would th think that it would get that sort of honest reaction if you weren't being an opportunist. So maybe what they're saying is true. And maybe that um, the hesitant, the he hesitation that we saw from Shirella and Black to answer that question, maybe that's what they were talking about. He actually is on some opportunist bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And maybe Winter clocked it the way we, because the way Winter laid that out, he said it was this, he did, he, Audition for Radio Love. That's why he was infatuated with joy. He tried to get me to do that. He tried to put his socks in the bag. Now that socks in the bag had me wrong. <laughs> he talked. No, you couldn't even get your socks in the bag. And then <laughs> got mad about it. But now the gag is too with 
it was revealed that he auditioned for Ready to Love and said that he matched with Joy. Yes. And then they said, we know the producer Ready to Love and that's you weren't even a part of the conversation. That's which, scary. Which, which, by the way, now listen, I don't work on Ready to Love. Right. Uh, okay. I don't <laughs> do game shows. I'm, I'm having fun. Okay. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> I'm having fun. I love Ready to Love. Hey, Will Packer. And hey, Wyatt. Yes. Right. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> so the way it works in production is this. And again, that's a dating show. I don't know how it works on a dating show like that. Right. But you. Because my dating show is going to be different. What it's did we call be, it again? My, it's going to be more like The Bachelor, but it's, you know, it's going to be the, sort of that for more on that later, though. We'll get to that later. But yeah, we're going to have fun with that one. But anyway, Carlos, go ahead. What, what were you saying now? How does it work on Ready to Love? So, so many ideas for that. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, tons, in fact. <laughs> so the thing is this the way that show works, that I, I, I believe dating show works, is you're not aware of who you're going to be seeing because it loses the not only the integrity of the show but it also loses the 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 most important element of the show which is the element of surprise For right sure. so For the sure. producers are able to know who may make it just based on your likes your dislikes so you fill out this long ass questionnaire or what your needs are all those things and you have an idea like, oh, this person may match with that person, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. But no cast member before they do the show is sent a portfolio of women or men who's on the show and say, these are the people you're compatible with because you're going to lose the essence and the element of surprise on the show. So I thought that was interesting. I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, that was weird to me. And like you said, they all clocked it like, that's not how that show works. Yeah. And it was weird too, because I think it was also mentioned as well that, oh, so is that why you defended Joy on the cabin trip? Because. Well, baby, Winner said strike three, you're out. Okay. <laughs> she got his ass up out of there. She said, I don't want no parts and meant it. She turned her back on him and hey, she had her reasons. You know what I'm yeah. saying? She had her reasons and he really didn't, necessarily refute any of them on that stage if you notice he never said no i didn't or no i'm not he just explained things and so i don't know sometimes you know you can see a red flag early on and absolve yourself of all that drama and you know toxicity going through getting to the conclusion you already have arrived at so yeah. good for her and good for him too because obviously they're not compatible no. so it's better for both of them to go they separate ways, you know. Yes. Maybe yes. you can make it on the ready to love next season. I was just about to end it with that. I would love to see. So listen, <laughs> Will Packer, who I know. Yes. I would like for you to cast Yusha on Ready to Love. Yep. Yeah. I would actually be into it because I, I I listen, I'm interested in who he is on a dating format. As long as he wears his t-shirts, child in the socks. I mm -hmm. want to be able to see. <laughs> you should. I had to. You thought I would. You should look at me like. <laughs> yeah. you that? But listen, QTNA. Okay, QTNA. <laughs> you had to ask the things you had to ask because you should. The way Winter had laid him out, the way that snowstorm, the, the way that Alberta Clipper wind that came coming through that that stage, Winter wore him out. Do you hear me? And then Shirella and Black went on and threw a little gas on the fire. They damn so. That was thing. like, yeah, no, that's he, handled it. he took it. He took it in stride. Though. He, he handled himself well. He was a good, he was a, a formidable, you know, competitor in that moment. I think he was. Yes. This reunion, like you said, was jam packed. We mm -hmm. have part three next week, the conclusion, which, like you said earlier, you're going to see the Duckins and the Petties address their issues head on. Finally. And Carmen makes an appearance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she look, came out ready to argue. You see it with ah! her and Brandon. They was going, Carmen is on, Carmen is the person who is on go, for real. <laughs> and I, and, you know, I appreciate that because I understand it. 
but sometimes, you know, it will be, I've, I've seen Carmen in interviews, like when, when you interviewed her and spoke with her, I thought her demeanor was great. I thought she gave great talk. I'm actually really, really happy for her because her and her partner have a lot of chemistry and they seem like they are, are perfect for each other. They seem like they are a match made in heaven, right? So I'm actually happy for her. Um, when she came on that stage from what we could see in the preview, which again was a limited glimpse, right? Mm -hmm. But from what we could see in that preview, it looked like ready to argue again, coming out with them gloves on and that's it. The way she hurts her, that spirited exchange we saw between her and Arena. You know, I just like, where is that? Where is all this coming from? And Carmen, um, she said it. She said that she would go into those scenes and, you know, be ready for whatever, whoever. Like, okay, I'm whoever got it. Let's I'm, go. I'm, yeah. Let's go. And that's what we saw. That's what we saw. That's what we saw. Carmen was, you know, hey, she was on it. It was Carmen, a hip hopera. That's what, that's <laughs> what it was. <laughs> Like the Beyonce movie. It was Carmen, a hip hopper on that stage. That's what it was, Carlos. So it'll be interesting to see What is wrong that. with you? It'll be interesting to see that next week. Carmen is good on this show. I know people have, you know, their opinions and they have every right to have them. But yeah. when it comes to p people who are, again, ready for, ready to play and ready to, to really get into the minutia of this thing, um, Carmen has proven herself to be just that. So... I think she adds value. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to part three. I My eyes are open. I'm looking forward to part three. That's what I'm going to tell you. But Justin, <laughs> thank you for another recap of Love and Marriage DC Part yes. 2 Reunion. We I will see each other next week for part three. Yes, we will. Crazy. That's right. Can't wait. See you next week. See ya.